I'd like you to turn to Exodus 33. Second book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus 33. Amen. Starting with verse 1, I'd like to read those 11 verses in your hearing. Exodus 33. Exodus 33. Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob's land, to your descendants I will give it. And I will send my angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites and the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites. Go up into a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. And when the people heard this bad news, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. I could come up into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now therefore, take off your ornament that I may know what to do to you. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Horeb. Moses took his tent and he pitched it outside the camp far from the camp and he called it the tabernacle of meeting and it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting which was outside the, the camp so it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door and all the people rose and they worshipped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. That's the key. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speak to his friend. And he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Lord, we ask your blessings upon your people today. We've already seen, Lord God, the moving of the Holy Spirit. And I just believe someone in this congregation Amen. This day, really, really do. All of us need it. But I believe someone, Lord, is on the brink. Oh, God, they just don't know what to, what to do and where to turn. But I believe, Lord, that you have this message for their heart especially today. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say, Amen. If I had a subject of this message today, it would be seeing God's face. See in God's face. Now I want to use the basic scripture of Exodus 33. And I want to cover two points. If the Lord will let me. And time permitting. Point one is turning from sin. Point two would be turning to God. Turning from sin and turning to God. The story of humanity is the story of alienation from God and reconciliation to God. Amen. Augustine said, and he quoted, Our hearts were made for you, O God, and they will not rest until they rest for you. Another observed, All human longing is really the longing for God. In the beginning, God made God and man walk together in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day. 
And that word cool is, in the Hebrew, it means spirit. It does not refer to the climate, but rather to the unbroken spiritual communion. When Adam and Eve sinned, they broke their fellowship with God and they were alienated from God through their sin and guilt. Then God provided an Adam and Eve covering made from an animal. An innocent offering took the place of the guilty. Atonement for their sins were provided by God as a free gift of God. All they had to do was to accept God's grace and forgiveness by faith and the relationship would be restored. Amen? Amen. All of this, brothers and sisters, pointed to the day when Jesus died on the cross in our place. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, who is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Can you say amen? amen? Just as Adam and Eve received the covering God provided for them, we are reconciled to God according to 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. But there are times when we as believers, we have a tendency to stray from God. Amen. Just like sheep that go astray. Amen. We experience alienation from Him as did the prodigal son in Luke 15. Amen. Sure, we are God's children, but we stray from Him. Amen. And go our own way. When this happened, God calls us back to Him. Oh, yes. This is where Israel was in their relationship with God after the ordeal with the golden calf. Amen. They were covenant people of God, and the Lord treasured possessions according to Exodus 19. But they had gotten caught up in idolatry. When Moses was alone on Mount Sinai receiving the law. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. yes. When Moses came down the mountain and he saw the sight of the people in reverie and idolatry, he shattered the tablets of stone mm -hmm. bearing the inscription, the inscriptions of the Ten Commandments. Yes. He destroyed the idols, then interceded on their behalf with God. And God's punishment was averted because of Moses' intercession. Mm -hmm. The question is, brothers and sisters, now how would the people be reconciled to God? How would they respond to God's mercy and grace? Would they avail themselves of the opportunity for repentance and renewal, more importantly, will we as a church. Amen. This brings me to point number one. Turning from sin. Amen. In those first six verses in Exodus 33, and I won't be able to reread them, but you can read them later. Two things occurred on Mount Sinai that day which was very important to understand. First, Moses interceded for the people and he made an offering of atonement for them so that God would forgive their idolatry. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in 32.30, Exodus 32.30, the next day Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin, but yeah. now I will go up to the Lord perhaps and make atonement mm -hmm. for your sin. Second, God extended mercy and grace to His people on the basis of the atonement. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. This pointed to Jesus yes. and His atonement on the cross. Yes. Yes. You see, He interceded for us and in oh, response, yes. God has poured out oh, upon the world His mercy and yes. grace yes. by which yes. we are saved. Yes. 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 I'm sure the Israelites didn't understand everything about the 
the atonement of life, we struggle to grasp the full meaning of the cross. Yet they believe that God would forgive them yes. on the basis of that atonement. Amen. The word atonement uh -huh. means to cover. Yes. It has the idea of bringing God and man together in fellowship. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You see, if you break the word down in its component, you get the meaning at one man. All right. At one man. Yes. You see, sin separate us from God, but yes, the atonement of Christ restored yes. our relationship Hallelujah. with God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. But we, like Israel, uh -huh. we have to respond to the grace of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in John 3 16, and all of us know it, oh, yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, the God and Son, to whoever yes. believes in him to not perish, but what? Eternal life. Have eternal life. Amen. Amen. You see, we, you and I, our part, we have to believe in order to have eternal life. Amen. Faith and repentance forms the path of yes. receiving God's grace. Yes. Did you hear that? Oh, yes. Faith and repentance Faith. forms the path of receiving yes. the grace of God. Yes. Note the order. First there is the atonement. Uh -huh. Then repentance. Yes. Faith and repentance are two sides of the same coin. Right. You see, repentance is only possible because God's grace yes. has provided a way of salvation. Hallelujah. Grace does not benefit us unless we trust Christ and Christ alone to yes. save us and we repent of our sins. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 What is repentance? All right. The word in Greek means to change your mind. Yes. It comes in two word form. Meta. Uh -huh. That's meaning after. Yeah. And knowing. Which means mind. Mind. After careful thought and deep thinking, we decide to make a positive change away from sin yes. and unto God. You see, repentance means to turn around and go the opposite direction yes. that you were traveling. Amen. It's not a 360 degree turn. Come on now. It's a 180 degree turn right, in on. the opposite direction. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You see, God's grace uh -huh. empowers us yes. to repent. Yes. Repent is a positive word which denotes a positive and a productive change in our life. Amen. We have to make up our mind oh, yes. that we don't want to go into sin anymore. Yes. We have to make up our mind. We can come to the altar yes. and we can cry crocodile tears amen, and walk right back out into sin. But when we make up our mind, yes. amen, we turn around and go the opposite direction. That's repentance. Yes. Amen. Back to the story. Yes. Sign number one. They were sorry for their sin. Uh -huh. People of Israel. God told Moses to lead the people to the promised land by himself. Yes. I will not do up with you because you are still dead people. And I might destroy you on the way. All right. Exodus 33 and 3. At that point, the people had not come to terms with the sin of the golden calf and repented for it. God was testing the sincerity of their repentance. When the people heard that God said what God had said, the Bible said they mourned. They felt remorse. They regretted what they had done in worshiping the golden calf. They weren't just sorry they had got caught. They truly and deeply grieved over what they had done and how they had offended the Lord, their maker. You see, there's an emotional side of repentance. Yes. Uh -huh. Paul writes about the necessity of sorrow in true repentance. He wrote to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. He said, Godly sorrow brings repentance. Amen. Godly sorrow. Amen. Now, we are not to say at this, we're not to stay at this place of mourning. We're not to stay there. 
You see, back in the early days, in the Great Awakening in the 1700s, back to higher the 1800s, churches, what, they had what they call a mourner bank. I really know where that is because I stayed there a lot. <laughs> the mourner bank. In other words, people from the congregation would go down to the mourner's bench and they would cry and lament over their sin. Mm -hmm. And of course, after we would express sorrow, yeah. amen, for our sin and confess to God, we were to celebrate uh -huh. mm -hmm. afterward because we felt like that God has forgiven us. Amen. Because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. We were glad to get rid of those sins. We were glad to get off that morning's sins. Amen. Because people would look over there in the church and thought that we was a bunch of criminals. <laughs> it would have been set, it's been set free of the morning's sins. Hallelujah. But it wasn't long before I would go back. <laughs> That doesn't cheapen the grace of God. That was some of the decisions I had made. Amen. That was wrong. The sign number two. They were sorry for their sins. Sign number one. Sign number two that they took off their ornaments. Yes. Three times we read that they took off their ornaments. Oh, yes, yes. First, as an act entirely on their own. Yeah. And the other two references record the Lord commanded them to take them off. God said that he would indeed, amen, he would, uh, would decide, sorry, what to do with them. Uh -huh. That's 33 and 5. Yes. So you see, but their repentance, their action, touched the heart of God. Yes. Amen, it did. Amen. Why? Because I'm going to tell you. God was reconsidering now going up with them uh -huh. and leading them into the promised land. You see, these stiff-necked people were finally showing signs of repentance yes. and submission to God yes. who redeemed them. Yes. Yes. See, this story teaches us that faith and repentance do make a difference yes. with God. Amen. You see, they removed their ornaments as a sign. Now listen, this is as a sign of humility before God. A total dependence upon His grace. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 6, says God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Humble yourself under the mighty oh. hand of God, yes. and He yes. will lift you yes. up. Yes. Amen. A sign of humility. Yes. Yes. And of course, I'm not quite sure some churches and some organizations, they have made a doctrine out of removing the jewelry and the ornament. You know, they made a doctrine out of it. But all of this was a sign, brothers and sisters, of humility. Yes. Now, I'm not saying today that you have to move, remove your ear ring before you come and pray as a sign of humility. I'm not saying that, that you missed the point. That's what you were thinking about. But the point is, we have to humble ourselves under the mighty. We have to come with a broken and a contrite spirit. Amen. 